afternoon, everybody. My name is Bridget Rainey, and um, I'm an architect and urban designer. And I'm facilitating uh, this afternoon's workshop with you all, um, along with um, colleagues from the Irish Architecture Foundation. So this is Bernadine Carroll here, um, who is also part of the workshop. So I'd like to welcome you to the um, Places Matters conference. And I'd like to welcome you to the street craft workshop um, that's running from 2 to 4 p.m. today. So just a quick uh, introduction, I suppose, to the structure of this afternoon and the running order. Um, I'm going to try and contain um, what I'd like to discuss with you today between 2 and 2.30. Um, then we will break and we'll try and assign you into groups for 10 minutes. Um, so this is going to be quite an informal afternoon um, after, I suppose, the more formal part uh, of my presentation. So we'd like it to be discur discursive um, and for people to feel free uh, to contribute in terms of discussion and conversation. Then we're going to get you in groups and out onto the streets because we are, um, as the name suggests for the workshop, we are looking at streets today. And we're lucky we have the sunshine on our side uh, to get out into the beautiful streetscape of Carlo this afternoon. Then we will come back and after you've been set, I suppose, uh, hopefully an exciting uh, set of tasks, we'll come back, we'll assemble the collection and we'll have a, a reflection and discussion that will bring us up to four o'clock. So we'll try to keep to that time if we can. So quite simply, I suppose I'm here today to talk to you about place. Um, place matters, obviously, is the theme of the conference. Um, but place is quite a complex um, thing to understand. It's a complex term, particularly in architecture and urban design terms. A big part of places and placemaking are the streets. And again, simply put, streets um, may seem like a single entity, one that we can look at as a, as a single item. But the makeup of streets is very, very varied and complex and multi-layered. So how do we, I suppose, really get to grips with understanding streets and then particularly when it comes to designing and regenerating um, streetscapes? Amongst urban design theorists, there's a lot um, of research within this area, um, notably by an architectural psychologist from the 70s, David Cantor, um, who proposed this structure um, to help uh, encapsulate everything that we need to know about place. So he believed that the three items, activities, the physical attributes, and people's conceptions of place, that together those three uh, would help understand place and places. A sense of place, that therefore in, I suppose, academic circles and in uh, practice is often um, thought to be derived from the interaction of these three elements. So the activity being the economic, the cultural and the social, the form, which is the relationship between buildings and spaces, and meaning, the sense of place, historical and cultural. So today we're in Carlo. We are in a very specific part of Carlo. And how would we begin, I suppose, to understand or think about this place that we are in? I am new to Carlo. This is my very first time in Carlo. So, in preparing for today and for visiting, I was trying to understand myself this place and thinking about ways in which I could understand the very special part of this town that we're in today. I suppose there are many ways that we can begin. Um, if we do a desktop research exercise, for example, before we visit a place, we can certainly look at um, what your local county council, Carlo County Council, um, have written about, particularly within the development plans. So again, very complex, multi-layered um, sets of information and data that would help us understand a place somewhat. If we look at the Project Carlo 2040 uh, vision, we can see, 
I suppose, proposals for the future of Carlo, and we could maybe try and see where place or this place sits within that. So looking at that, we can see from this diagram here, um, the green there is the cultural quarter. So that is the, the area of um, Carlo Town, the, the area we're culturally sitting in, currently sitting in. That has been designated as a future cultural quarter. It, it may already be that. Um, and that's something I think we might explore this afternoon. So taking that green bubble, um, I suppose, do we see cultural signs within the area? Well, you could argue yes, uh, based on, I suppose, the significant landmark buildings that are situated here, the visual, the cathedral, the, the museum, the courthouse, etc. Very significant, um, visually outstanding uh, landmark buildings within a very close proximity of each other. So looking loosely at um, the area that is within this cultural quarter, if, if you take this notional um, diagram and you begin to wonder, well, where exactly would the extent of that quarter be? And you layer it with the streets, you can see the Old Dublin Road, College Street, Brown Street, Charlotte Street and Tullow Street. Those streets are sitting really within the cultural quarter and they are extending then into the other areas, the other quarters of um, Carlo Town. So how would we begin to understand, I guess, these streets as part of a cultural quarter? Um, often the streets that you would find in cultural quarters in significant cities around Europe, they are often the streets that sit outside the commercial zone. Um, they are the streets where the visitor or the inhabitant of a place um, goes to, to, to spend time for other purposes than um, shopping, consumption, etc. So they have a, a very specific identity and they have a very specific sense of place. So this is really the um, streets and spaces that I'd like to focus our workshop on today. Um, taking then the Old Dublin Road, as I said, College Street, Brown Street, Charlotte Street and Tullow Street, and recognising, I suppose, where those streets sit in relation to um, very significant features of Carlow Town, the river being one, um, the rail, which would obviously uh, be bringing in the visitor and is your transport hub, and then the market, the potato market there to the south. So streets as places in cultural quarters, question mark. What are those types of streets? How do we begin to understand those streets? Well, again, if you refer to um, the theorists, um, those that conceptualize, try to, to understand cultural quarters. Um, one example here from Montgomery in 2003, he has identified 16 place characteristics um, that you would typically find within a cultural quarter. Narrowing that for today's purposes, if we were to conceptualize Carlo's cultural quarter under activity, built form and meaning, um, what are the characteristics that we would need to focus on? So you can see there under activity, um, diversity of pri primary land uses is important. The extent and variety of cultural venues and events. The strength of the small firm economy. The presence of an evening economy. Under form, the variety and adaptability of building stock. Legibility, active frontages and permeability. And I'll explain these terms in more detail. Lastly then is the meaning, so the conceptions of people um, of a place, which may differ from um, the actual factual reality of a place. So that would be the sense of history, the area identity and imagery, the design appreciation and style, and the, um, the, uh, the location of important meeting and gathering spaces. So these are place characteristics that supposedly make up cultural quarters. So taking this further, for today's workshop, um, I've put these together into four toolboxes. 
And within urban design research and practice, it's very common to find urban designers using different lenses or toolkits or toolboxes, etc., to try and get to grips with the urban environment, to try and understand it further. And I think that's something that everybody does naturally. They have their own way of, of trying to understand um, the built environment, to understand places. But sometimes different lenses, different ways of looking can help us maybe see or perceive or understand a place um, in a way that we may not have before. So taking um, this model here of four toolboxes, um, I've subdivided an activity, a form, and a meaning lens um, within box within each toolbox for which we will use then today as part of our workshop. The idea would be that we will get into groups and we'll each head out into those streets taking different starting points within the area and mapping then in this formation, taking those major streets and the spaces that are off those streets to begin to explore and analyze this part of Carlow Town Centre. The idea is that people feel free to record in whatever way they like, that be that drawing, sketching, notes, taking photos, etc. So it's quite an open workshop. And just, I suppose, translate the logic behind um, the action versus the theory model. You can see, as I mentioned there, place is the combination of meaning, form, and activity. So for today's workshop, we'll look at recording meaning through photographing, recording what we understand of the form of this area through mapping, and the activity through listing. So three distinct activities for the three distinct elements of place. There are four toolboxes. I've color-coded them in the primary colors of red, blue, green, and yellow. And if I take you through the, each toolbox so that everybody has a, a, a thorough understanding um, before we head out. So toolbox one, so activity, diversity of primary land uses. So what do I mean by that? So if you were to walk around the streets within this cultural quarter, you're looking to find primary land use, so that is residential, that's an, a need, it's, it's something that's primary, but what is the mix of that? Is, there a, is it single in, in that it's only houses, or is there apartments, houses, different types of houses, etc.? How varied is that mix? What, how diverse is that? Schools, colleges, we're in one now, that's a primary land use. Uh, financial and business services, all of the services, health, medical, religious, etc. Do we find those in this area? I think we will find th that there are a number of those. Um, and they're the four streets that are the major streets. So again, it's to try and really list what we understand as individuals or know of those uses within those streets. So getting out, walking around, um, I suppose looking in a way that we may not have looked before at these streets, or if we're new to Carlo, looking at Carlo for the first time. Form then variety and adaptability of building stock. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so if we were to take the map and explore the streets, would we find buildings that have lasted the uh, test of time? Have they been able to adapt, change their use? Um, are they reinvigorated, repurposed in new ways? A very nice example of that is um, this very unique building across the road, which apparently was the architectural offices for the cathedral and is now um, Mimosa, a tapas restaurant. So this is a building that has adapted and changed its use over the course of its lifetime. If we look at meaning then and sense of history, how does this part of Carlo Town communicate its sense of history? Do we find uh, places um, where historical events occurred? Is that made known to us as a, a pedestrian when we walk around? Um, is there architectural heritage here? 
I, I think we could all say yes. Um, archaeological heritage. How is that sense of history made known and apparent and visible to somebody exploring the streets in this area? Moving then to the second toolbox. So taking again the theme of activity, this time looking at the variety of cultural venues and events. So cultural venues, you could argue this is one today because it's being purposed uh, for a, the cultural event of the conference. Um, but there may be others, there may be other buildings that somehow at some time of a year they host a cultural event that may be informal or formal and I suppose the local knowledge here um, may be able to tell us more on that. Cultural events then are temporary in the main but there may be a permanent event. So again, um, where are are the places within the streets, where are the areas that, I suppose, have that uh, memory of events? And this is an example of how the forecourt here has been used. I think this is from St. Patrick's Day. Legibility, then, is a way that we can begin to explore the form of a place. So what I'd like people involved in this workshop to do today is to try and communicate how legible this environment is to them. What is memorable to you from a walk around this area? What are the things that don't stand out and what are the things that do? So how legible is it? How can you understand this environment or do you not understand it at all? This is something I'd like people to really interrogate and think about for, from their own perspectives. Meaning then, looking at area identity and imagery. So this is where we'd like people to photograph um, how the area that we're in communicates all the things about culture and creativity, if it's a cultural quarter. Is that again apparent through imagery? Is there art in the environment? Is there posters of cultural events? How would we know that this is an area um, that has culture and creative activity. The third toolbox then is, relate th is the same. We're looking at activity. This time we're looking at the strength of a small firm economy. So what do I mean by that? Well, within cultural quarters, you would tend to find uh, small and medium enterprises. So people who are trying to set up small businesses, you will find the creative industries, so be they architects in practice, musicians, photographers, um, the range uh, is growing in that area. Um, workspaces for artists, etc. Do we see the presence, I suppose, of that economy within this area? Form, then, of a cultural quarter is generally um, looked at from an active front frontage perspective. So, when you're walking at street level, at eye level, what are you, um, what is your eye engaged with? Is there a frontage, a street facade that allows you to interact with the interior of a building or are you met with a lot of blank frontages or walls or hoarding, etc.? So how open and transparent is the form of this area? So you will have known, I suppose, if you are from Carlo, that um, the railings that were outside of the college here were not here in the uh, previously, so there was walls, so this would have been an inactive frontage. So sometimes to, to look for a positive, we need to also analyze the negative, and so this is the opposite of an active frontage, but now obviously it's made active through the, um, the railings. Meaning then, looking at design appreciation and style. So asking you to photograph um, whether or not you think there is an appreciation of design made apparent within the streets of this area. Is there a style? And that's a very open term in this session. It, style may mean many things to different people. But do you feel that this is an area where buildings are cared for? Uh, where people have personalised them, where maybe there's a sense of the use of innovative materials, um, 
where there's expression of contemporary architecture. Certainly, the addition of visual um, brings that language, um, design appreciation and style to this area. But I'd like people to think and look at not the obvious, so not visual, and not the addition there to the County Museum. Can you find other examples, um, or are there other examples that you think exist? Lastly then is the fourth toolbox, so activity looking at presence of an evening economy. This is very, very important in all towns, this notion of 24-hour cities and streets. So what are we looking for here? Well, the existence usually of cafes, bars, restaurants, etc., but also 24-hour um, gyms, etc. I walked around Carlow Town last night and I was really surprised to see a um, squash court, um, a social club up the road, uh, meeting somebody at 9 p.m. walking with a squash racket. That's an example of an evening economy in an area in a town. This is some old examples on Charlotte Street. I believe the Ritz Ballroom existed there, and then there was a nightclub. Um, so again, we will see through time, and people maybe who know the area will be able to tell us more about what that evening economy was like in the past. And this is the uh, current um, social club that I referred to there um, previously. Lastly, then, in relation to form, is to explore permeability. So what does permeability mean? Well, permeability is simply um, the extent to which the urban form permits movement of people in different directions. So like water permeates through soil, how do people move um, through an area? And I'd like people to look at this maybe from a more nuanced perspective, thinking about streets, not that there's a street there, therefore I can move, but is that street safe to move down? Do I feel comfortable? Would I go there? Is it adequately lit? Is the paving even? Is it full of holes? Will I trip, etc.? So is it, is it actually a space that is permeable? Um, it may look like you can move, but you may not go there because you uh, would not feel comfortable to do so. Equally, what about cyclists? Um, we mightn't focus so much on the car. We'll think of the pedestrian and the cyclist in the main for this one. So here's an example, I suppose, of some of the current lighting there along the County Museum, um, which enhances the permeability of that section of the street. Lastly, then, looking at meaning. So meeting and gathering spaces, really, really important to the vibrancy um, of a place. Do we find examples of meeting spaces? So we obviously may think initially of more formal public spaces, um, plazas, piazzas, etc. But I'd like people to really think about more simple spaces like a corner that's very comfortable to stop and have a conversation in. Is there a place to shelter from the rain? Is there somewhere comfortable to sit? Is there certain parts of these streets that tend to hold people for, for gathering? So again, if people could photograph, what they observe or what they know of those spaces, that would be great. So they're the toolboxes. I hope I've explained them, and I'm obviously going to speak uh, to people once we get into your, to your groups um, to answer any questions. Um, when we issue the kits and people get together and go out, we'll then return back to this space. We'll hopefully give people about an hour to, to get out onto the streets, and then we'll come back and discuss the findings. We've also set up um, a Miro page called Streetcraft. Um, I hope most people in this room have been sent the link. This is a piece of software um, that you can use from your mobile phone. And it's an app that you can use. This is what it looks like in terms of um, the page that's set up. So I've set up um, some blank pages there and uh, directions in terms of where people might upload photos. There's a function there where you can add digital post-it notes, stickies, 
and you can write comments, etc. So we'd like people to engage if they feel comfortable to do so with that software. Um, and please feel free to contribute any ideas or comments. Um, so we might just switch to the live version of that um, so it's clearer, yes. Okay, so that's all I had planned to present so far. I think we're quite good with time. It's coming up to 2.30. Would anybody like to ask any questions at this stage? If you'd like to ask a question, just raise your hand and we can send a mic to you. <laughs> no. Okay, so what I think we will do now, we will try and get everybody into groups. We have planned for groups of five, if, if that's feasible. We'd like to get a nice mix of people working together today. So ideally, we'd like to mix local people, if we have them in the room, with people who are visiting just for the conference and maybe are like myself, have never been to Carlo before. Um, would I be able just to get a, a, people to raise their hands if they are a local person, if they're from Carlo Town? We have two, we have a good few, great. Oh, brilliant, very good. Um, okay, maybe if I ask you people from Carlo to stand um, on one, by that radiator over there, to stand in that part of the room, and then we'll assemble the groups once we know. And then everyone else, if they stand by that um, microphone. Thank you. <laughs> 